what's going on everybody welcome this is whistle gig martial arts radio today andrew and i are bringing you another word association episode where he gives me ridiculous terms that have nothing to do with martial arts and my job is to relate them to martial arts you all seem to enjoy these so stick around if nothing else the two of us have fun That's if you're new to whistle kick and martial arts radio start at whistlekick.com check out everything we got going on there from uh, information about free training day and all in weekend and the consulting that we do and so much more like our store. Uh, you could be watching or listening to this at any point in the future, but just a couple of weeks ago, we took another shipment of sparring gear and I have a huge stack of boxes going out later today. If you want to buy some, you can use the code podcast one five. We have training programs over there too. Those have been really hot lately. And it's all meant to cover the expenses of putting all this cool stuff together that we do for all of you, the traditional martial artists of the world. Our mission here is to connect, educate, and entertain all of you, no matter what you do or where you do it or how you do it, et cetera. Now, Martial Arts Radio, the show, has been running for just shy of eight years. We're coming up on our 800th episode. <laughs> I, I paused for a moment. I counted your fingers. I don't know why. Andrew held up eight fingers and I went one, two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling a little slap happy this morning, so you'll have to forgive me, but it might actually go well for the show for what we're doing. But if you go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, you can get access to every single episode we've ever done. There are transcripts over there. You can search things. And really we've done episodes with just about everybody you could name from Many, many countries, not quite all 50 states in the U.S., but just about, mm. and every martial art that you could think of, including some that prior to the guest coming on, I had never even heard of, and I thought that was super fun. So go and check those out. And if you want to help us, if you want to support us in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain, let me give you three things that you could do. I already gave you one of them. You could buy some at whistlekick.com. You could also tell people about what we do. It's still the number one thing that I wish people would would take a more active role in. Reach out to your martial arts friends because let's face it, if you're paying attention to what we do, you probably wish you had known about us sooner. Well, don't don't hide what we're doing from your martial arts friends, from the folks you train with, your training partners, your old training partners, your students, your instructors, et cetera. And of course we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Starts at $2 a month, gives you behind the scenes. If you want to know what episodes are coming up, who's going to be on the show, this is the only way you find out. And of course, as you move further and further up in the tiers, we give you more and more like merch and access to a school owner's mastermind or even the opportunity to train privately with me. Andrew. Yes. Hi, Jerry. This is our f Hi, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> this is our fourth word association. Yeah. Are we ever going to run out of words? Are you going to keep track of all the words? Is you somebody going to keep track of it? I thought words? of that today. I thought of like, oh, shoot. Have I done this one before? I might have. There's one word on my list that we may have done before. But uh, my thought is you may see that word differently today than you did four months ago. So. Uh, Likely. Yeah. So I, I, but I have not been keeping track of the words I've been using. Uh, if someone, if a listener wants to do that, we, you know what I would love? It'd be great if we had a, our own wiki page. That would be fun. I was so I listened to a bunch of other podcasts. Yeah, um, this is not the only podcast I listen to. I, <gasps> it's a shock. <gasps> um, and there's one uh, podcast in particular that I listen to. It's a husband and wife, and they they bring s stuff to talk about each week. They each bring mm -hmm. one thing, and they try and go back and forth in terms of who starts first. And when they mm -hmm. forget, there's a listener that has a wiki that puts down who spoke first and what they talked about to make sure that they don't. So they talk all the time. Like, yeah, I checked our wiki. I've not brought this up before, but it surprises me because I'm, you know, whatever, but they, some it. fan is just has this wiki page just for them. Basically. So. That's hysterical. And, you know, we've actually put out there that we're looking for another person to help with the show, like an hour a week. If that, you yeah. know, there are just a couple, couple things that I'd like to take off your plate that, and a couple other small things that we'd like to add into the, the production mix. So if somebody out there says, you know, I really dig this show and no, I'm not going to donate money. I don't do any of these other things, but I would be super pumped to put in like 30, 45, 60 minutes a week and get to know 
who's coming up on the show and have some guidance on yep. how this show goes. I mean, that's, it would be fun. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> so anyway, I have a list here of, of uh, nine words. Nine? Okay. Yeah, I've got nine. Whew. Uh, I'm ready. And so I thought it'd be fun. Close your eyes. I'm going to show the audience again because that was fun last week. Or last it was fun. Week. So here is the list of nine items. And then, okay, you can look now. <clears throat> so are you ready to go? As ready as I'm going to be. Okay. First word, tire iron. Makes a great weapon. You could really mess somebody up with a tire iron. Mm -hmm. You could also use a tire iron to, which just the, the phonetic element of tire iron is fun. Also think about what's the purpose of a tire iron. You use it to take off a tire and put on another tire because things are broken. And if only it were that easy with our body, right? You know, like, oh, this ankle needs to go into the shop, right? So you tire iron your ankle off and get a new ankle. Ankle. But what I think I appreciate it for most as a martial artist is the fact that not only is it a, a weapon that sort of vaguely resembles a tunfa in no useful way, but that most of us have them or something similar to one in our car. And we've talked a lot over the years of this show about the the value of an impromptu, improvised, uh, you just kind of always have it on you sort of weapon. And whether or not you believe all of the kind of history that's put forward about Okinawan weapons, the main premise for all of them is, well, they had them with them. They were around. They had them on them. And how do you take that and make it a little more useful in a combative sense. And I, I, I'd i kind of like somebody to go through and think about what all the modern equivalents are, not from a necessarily a farming gardening perspective, but, you know, tire iron is a great one because most of us have cars and we drive them and we have equipment to change tires if need be. Mm -hmm. They kind of look like a tonfa unless you have the ones that look like throwing stars. Yeah, the, the, the square ones. Yeah, those I think would be less useful in a combative sense. Yeah. Uh, action figures. Is is that some weird hybrid of a stormtrooper and a and a samurai? That is exactly what it is. Okay. Yep. That's really interesting. Um you know, I, I, I think there are a couple different ways I could go with this, but the one that I appreciate most is you know, I was probably 10, 11 years old, Ninja Turtles, and I had a bunch of the Ninja Turtle action figures. And I remember being a little, I guess, disappointed is the word that they didn't articulate quite as well as a body would, because I wanted to take what I was learning in my training and make my action, action figures do those things. You know, I wasn't able to make Donatello do the bow form that I knew. And I, I, I didn't like that. I thought that was um, disappointing, right? Um, but I also, just to kind of foreshadow a little bit, you know, we're re recording this on a day that an episode came out about Master Hopkick and the new version of the book. And it's, it's, you know, it's on my list. I want Master Hopkick action figures. Because how cool would that be? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Neckties. Something that really should be the antithesis of martial arts, right? It's like, oh, hold on. Let me, let me prearrange this durable knot so you can strangle me. And then go to a formal event where I'm probably already wearing uh, movement restricting clothing. And probably also uh, blurring my sensitivities with alcohol mm -hmm. at most formal events, right? It, it really should be something that as martial artists we resist, but I had actually not thought of it until just this moment. But I think a, a necktie is kind of, uh, there's some similarities there with a belt. Up in, 
until recently and until you get to higher ranks, belt uh, customization doesn't generally happen that often. But we can look at a necktie in a similar way as the belt, right? We, we, we have this, this cliche, you know, a belt's just there to hold your pants up. Well, it doesn't even do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our belts don't do anything. They are just symbolic. Yeah. And a necktie is sort of the same thing in that if you have ever worn a martial arts uniform without a belt in such a setting where you would typically wear a belt, it looks funny and it feels funny. And I find that if I'm wearing any kind of a suit or, um, you know, a jacket, I need a tie or it just doesn't quite feel right. It's like, I don't, I don't know if I want anybody to see my buttons. <laughs> okay. Next word, chain mail. Chain mail. Okay. Um, takes a long time to make. You have a chain mail cowl. Yep. That you are displaying. Um, and are you going to put it on? No. It's Why? very cold. It's very cold and I have no hair. <laughs> it's very cold. That's a great reason. Um, you know, I, I think when we look at armor and then you start to look at weapons as they relate to that armor, right? Like there's no, there's no one style of armor that is impenetrable. Right. Chainmail, ring mail is really good for pointy things. But if you get something, you know, like a like a heavier, kind of like a like a thick plate mail, you know, there there's there's ways to come up under, or at the very least, you know, large blunt objects to dent the armor into someone's flesh. Right. Like there's there's for every protective methodology, there's a downside to it. And chainmail. It's heavy. It's super heavy, right? Like, what do you think that that cowl weighs? Oh, I don't know. It's probably five pounds. Right. So if you were covered head to toe in that, you're probably adding 75 pounds. Yeah, probably. You know, and that's that's not nothing. Uh, but if we look at martial arts, it is if you're wearing chain mail, does that really change my ability to attack you? Not really, you know, my, as, as pointy as my fingers may be, I'm not trying to point through your flesh. I'm going to attack you with blunt force and chain mail is not really going to do much about that. Uh, but it sounds cool. It does. It, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only cool. chain mail I have in my house is for scrubbing cast iron. Oh, yeah. It's sure. a little three by three square. Yep. Postcards. Okay. Postcards. Postcards. I think postcards are a great example of something that has kind of gone away with the proliferation of email. People don't send postcards anymore. I remember being a kid, and you probably remember this too, when you went on vacation with your family, you had a handful of people that you had to buy postcards for. And you never sent them out while you were on vacation. You always forgot. And you sent them when you got home. Yep. But it was still a thing that you did. And those postcards would go on people's refrigerators. And you probably had postcards on your refrigerator from people that sent them to you. And they'd stay there for years. And then eventually you'd run out of room on the refrigerator and you'd purge all of it. What do we do now? We post on Instagram. It's probably the modern equivalent. Here's a picture of a thing that I saw. And it made me think of maybe you, maybe you send it individually to someone or you text it, but it's still, we're trying to capture moments to share them. Postcards, even though they weren't the photos that we took, we're still, you know, we were grabbing a postcard of a thing that we saw to try and capture that moment to recreate that moment for later. Now, when we look at our training, there are things that have gone by the wayside because we can do other things now. Here's a great example. When was the last time someone bought VHS or DVD sets? They still happen, but it doesn't happen nearly as commonly as it, as it used to mm -hmm. because it's a lot easier to get access to people who are teaching some things that are a bit different. 
you go back to the 70s and the 80s, there were people that maybe you wanted to train with. But how would you find out about where they were training? You didn't have a website to go to and say, oh, they're going to be, you know, four hour drive away six months from now. I'll save that date. Right. Maybe maybe there was a newsletter you could sign up for if they were really prominent. Maybe they had a fan organization or something. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to train, quote, with them, you bought tapes or later DVDs. And now you can go train with them in person. You can grab their videos from YouTube or from their own website, right? Like there are a lot of options there. And it's not that one was necessarily better. I think what we're doing in this case is better now. It's more accessible. Yeah. But I, I think it brings to mind this idea that sometimes tradition for the sake of tradition has value and sometimes it doesn't. There are people out there who still buy and send postcards. I'm not one of them. I'm not going to tell someone they can't or shouldn't. But there are other ways. And we should always consider, at the very least consider the other way. Is... All right. Flute. Would make a good blunt weapon for a few <laughs> a few goes. Um, the closest thing I'm coming to in a martial sense is you know when I, when I think revolutionary war or civil war I think about the musicians out in front mm -hmm. you know kind of I, I guess setting the tone for movement you know maybe setting the cadence of marching but also trying to keep spirits elevated and it reminds me we did a whole episode on music and the value of music and how it still is in so few martial arts settings what what would it look like if there was a flautist, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, you know, at the beginning of a tournament or, you know, I'm going to go out and do a form and flautist comes out doo -doo 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 -doo, and then steps <laughs> off and I do my form. Right? Um, you could, you could make some other comparisons in terms of finger dexterity and it being a difficult skill set that you have to master just like martial arts. But yeah, it's it's the energetic element. It's the fact that music brings people up and a flute is a really distinctive tone, distinctive sound that you don't really hear anything. If you hear a flute, you know it's a flute. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's one that you will appreciate. Lego. You can make anything. It might not look good. And... Sometimes you're looking for that one piece. You're like, oh man, if I had, I need this two by one in this blue color. Doesn't, it's not looking right. You know, I've got a hole here. Sometimes we spend time hunting for solutions for martial arts problems. And to me, that's what, that's what Lego is. And it's, it's still new to me to call it Lego and not Legos, right? I go up calling it Legos. I understand it is Lego. If I slip, this is why. But with Lego, you have a vision for an end point. You're trying to get to somewhere, especially if you're doing, you know, freeform building. I want to make a this. Mm -hmm. Okay, How do I get from here to there? <clears throat> and you get some idea and you start putting some pieces together. But inevitably, you're going to have to take some pieces apart. You're going to not have a few pieces that you wanted. Or once it's together, pardon me. It doesn't look quite the way you had envisioned it in your mind. So you make those adjustments. And I think we can say the same thing about a lot of our training. You learn a form and you have this vision of, okay, now I've got it. This is what it's going to look like. Well, video it, watch it, tell me how it looks. Never looks as good as it feels when you're starting out. If you're sparring, maybe you're sparring someone who always gets you. You know, they're, they're always, they've just always been better than you. And you attack it like a problem. How do I, how do I solve the challenge of this person and the way they spar? And you put some pieces together and inevitably the first pass doesn't work. Or maybe if it works, it only works once, right? Like you've got to, you've got to go back to the drawing board a few times. And I think that willingness to tear down and rebuild, tear down and rebuild is a constant process for us as martial artists is incredibly valuable. 
I don't care who you are, how long you've been training to put a white belt on again, even in your own style, even to start back over with the first techniques in the first form, learning them a little bit differently, maybe from someone else has a tremendous amount of value. Yeah, I knew that would be an easy one. That was a, that uh, I gave you a nice softball there. I appreciate that uh, after flu to you. Uh, all right, here's one that's not so much of a lob records as in vinyl records hmm. <laughs> so one of the things that was relatively easy to do on a lot of record players at least the ones i was exposed to when i was young was that you could change the speed mm -hmm. and while most of the time you would listen to the record at the intended speed, you know, 30, 45, whatever it was, there were times where slowing it down would give you some insight into things that you had not noticed at full speed. Yeah, this is a direction you didn't yeah, expect me good. to go. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's why I smiled and when you said I was like, oh, this one's easy. Now, it, is it the same? No, the, the pitch is off. <clears throat> Uh, it doesn't sound as good. Nobody's going to take a 45 and slow it down to 15 and listen to it and and enjoy it. But what if you're trying to learn the percussion work? Mm -hmm. You're trying to learn something about cadence in there. There's a lot that you can do with that. And sometimes it's just plain fun, right? And you can say the same thing about martial arts. There's no secret that I very much preach the value of training slowly. Um, what I, I believe I'm settling on for a name is the uh, reduced, intense reduced, reduced intensity training method. Right? That's the, I'm pretty sure that's the, the name that we're going to settle on. Because once you can get things slowed down, a lot of really cool stuff, even magic stuff happens because you can train in a way that without that intensity, you are not, feeling any semblance of fear and that's where the mind starts to open up and become a lot more receptive to education cool you can also sometimes hear different messages if you play it backwards yes <laughs> yes um what's the what's the the really famous one uh it was one of the beatles records right john is dead if you played it backwards there was something in there i think so i don't, I don't remember but yeah uh sleds as in winter sleds. Mm. Uh, super fun. And you kind of have to surrender when you get on a sled. You can think that you're in control, but you're not. It's gravity. It's the snow conditions. Um, anybody who has attempted to steer with their hands has probably torn up their mittens. That, that was a thing as a kid. You know, mm -hmm. Those are the only mittens you're getting. So you're getting duct tape on them. Um, this is a much harder one. <sighs> yeah, that, that's what I keep coming, coming back to surrender. You just kind of have to go mm -hmm. and you have to trust that it's just, you're going to get from here to there. I mean, you, you, when you sled, you're not going back uphill, right? You're always going to go downhill, maybe not as far as you wanted, or maybe you're going to not hit the the jump that you wanted to or maybe you are going to hit the jump and it's going to be faster than you expected uh those were the best days <laughs> the number of times that, that ah and you separate from the sled it's good times um but that's what makes it fun right is is that surrender and that process and you're just kind of going in and when i think about some of the more enjoyable scenario based drills that i've done especially where I'm receiving from multiple attackers, you just kind of have to surrender. You just kind of have to go. Uh, is it perfectly safe? No. Uh, are you going to win? No. But it's in that process that your your is your purpose. It's the whole reason for doing it. And that's what makes it fun is that, you know what? I, I suspend any belief that six people attacking me, I would win. And uh, let's just see what happens. All right. 
That was our ninth word. However, I have a tenth bonus word. A bonus word? Yeah. Oh, did the audience know there was a bonus word? Uh, nope. Oh, okay. The final word is chain mail. Not chain mail, but chain mail. <laughs> like a chain letter? Yeah. Do people today even know what a chain letter is? I bet a lot of our listeners do. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, oh, easy. Okay. So just in case you are younger and missed the transition from chain letters, pieces of paper, to chain email, because nobody sends those anymore. The closest we get now is on Facebook when someone posts something ridiculous. It's like, yep. you know, I tried this and it works and you do this and then it changes everything. No, well, not really. Um, or or put this on your Facebook wall uh, and have people comment on it. Yeah. Those, those are similar, but the spirit is a little bit different. So believe it or not, younger people, you used to receive letters in the mail that were typed on a typewriter and it said, you know, if you don't send this letter out to 10 people in the next seven days, you know, bad things are going to happen. Or if you do, you're going to get money or whatever. And people would do it. You know, remember, this is back when you had to like go photocopy things or type them out uh, and pay for stamps. Right? Like, like the whole idea of a chain letter was was so much more involved in the 80s than it is today. But if you ask someone... Why are you doing this? Well, just in case. I I just just in case. But what what if what what if what if it works? You know, there was this uh, suspension of disbelief even among very rational people that this act may have a consequence, despite their inability to recognize any possible logic of that consequence. And there are elements within our training that are that. Why do you still teach this thing this way? You've made all these other changes in what you do. Yeah, well, I, I don't, I just do. Okay. It's, it's inconsistent with what you say is important to you and for your students. Yeah, I know. Okay. For a lot of us, there are things for which true examination takes a tremendous amount of energy. And not all of us are willing to exert the energy to make that examination because we are fearful that there's also a lot of energy on the other side as we see the consequences of that. Um, this happens all the time, every day, not to all of us, but I would guess that for most of us, if you were to sit down with a close friend and say, hey, what are some of my closely held beliefs that maybe you think are inconsistent with other things that I do? Here's a great one. Medical professionals that smoke cigarettes. Mm -hmm. That was a conversation I was having with someone in the last few days. I'm not, I'm not telling someone not to smoke. But if your whole purpose professionally is to keep people healthy, and then you are choosing to do something that is counter to that, that's the type of example that I'm thinking of. It, mm -hmm. it, it defies logic. And there are plenty more of those. Cool. Thus concludes our fourth word association. Word association. Nice. Thanks. You're having fun putting these words together. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. That's cool. The chain mail and the chain mail. How did you, how did you end up there? Uh, because I, I said chain mail the first time and for whatever reason it popped in my head. Oh, uh, okay. So that, that was a, that was an audible at the end. Yep. Oh, right on. I dig it. All right. Well, 
listeners, viewers, a- anybody consuming this in some form, we will collectively refer to you as audience. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Remember, if you have words that you want Andrew to use, you can reach out to him. Andrew at Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Dot com. Don't send them to me. I don't want to know about them ahead of time. But we're having some fun with these. And, and you know, even if nobody else enjoys them. But from the feedback I get, I don't know about you, the feedback I get, people do enjoy them. Yeah, it, it's fun. It's fun. It, it is fun. And it's a different thing that I am not familiar with anyone on a podcast doing. And we're always looking to do things that are fun and different. If you want to support our funness and our differences, you can support us in a lot of ways. You can join the Patreon. You can join, you can go to the whistlekick.com slash family page for all the things you can do to support. You can make a purchase using the code podcast15 or consider too that we offer consulting services. If you have a martial arts school and your school would like to be more, however you define more, that is a thing that we can help you with. So please reach out. You can email me directly, jeremy at whistlekick.com. There's also a page at whistlekick.com that outlines all of that. And, you know, seminars, we're still booking seminars. We will continue to book seminars. I like teaching seminars. So reach out for that too. And we'll see if we can make it work. Our social media is at Whistlekick everywhere you might think of. Andrew, thanks for your time prepping for this one. Audience, thanks for coming by. Until next time, train Train hard, hard, smile, smile, and have have a great day. day.